What is the reciprocal function? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. First, recall what a reciprocal is. What is the reciprocal of the number x? You may or may not remember that the reciprocal of a number x is 1 over x, so long as x is not equal to 0. Because if x is equal to 0, then this is a division by 0, which is undefined. As an example, the reciprocal of 4 is 1 over 4. So why do we care about the reciprocal of a number? Well, one reason is that the reciprocal of a number is its multiplicative inverse. So if we multiply a number by its reciprocal, we get 1. And we use this fact all the time, whether we know it or not, while solving equations. So, with that in mind, what do you think the reciprocal function is? Well, it may come as no surprise at all that the reciprocal function is f of x equals 1 over x. The reciprocal function takes an input and spits out the reciprocal of that input. So let's try evaluating the reciprocal function at a few values of x in order to sketch a graph. So here I've drawn a Cartesian plane. Notice that both axes are going up by units of 1. Also, I want to quickly point out that the reciprocal function is also a power function. Remember that a power function consists of a constant being multiplied by our variable, which is raised to a constant power. In this case, the reciprocal function is equal to x to the power of negative 1. So it is a special kind of power function. Pretty neat. Let's go ahead and get into the graphing. We'll start off nice and simple and evaluate this function at 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. We can go ahead and graph that, and x value of 1, y value of 1, it's right about there. And you might notice if we had had an input of negative 1, then we would also have an output of negative 1. So let's go ahead and graph that point as well. An x-coordinate of negative 1 and a y-coordinate of negative 1 gives us a point right about there. Alright, let's keep things simple and go up to the next integer, evaluating the reciprocal function at x equals 2. f of 2 is equal to 1 over 2, that's 1 half. So we'll graph that, an x-coordinate of 2, y-coordinate of 1 half, so it's right about there. Again, if we had negative 2 as our input value, we would have had an output of negative 1 half. So let's plot that point as well. x equals negative 2, y equals negative 1 half, it's right about there. Continuing in this way, let's do one more. Evaluate the reciprocal function at x equals 3. That's going to give us 1 third. We'll plot that point. x equals 3, y equals 1 third, it's right about there. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Again, if we had input negative 3, we would have gotten output of negative 1 third. So let's plot that point as well. x equals negative 3, y equals negative 1 third. That's right about there. So far, we've had our x values getting further away from 0, either in the positive or negative direction. And when we do this, notice that our y values are getting closer and closer to 0. That, of course, is because if you divide 1 by a bigger and bigger number, you get a smaller and smaller number. If we divide 1 by 100, for example, that's a lot smaller than 1 divided by 5. So as the absolute value of x increases, the absolute value of f of x will decrease, approaching 0. Now, instead of having our x values get further away from 0, let's get closer to 0. Let's try evaluating the reciprocal function at x equals 1 half. That's going to be 1 over 1 half. And remember, dividing by a fraction, I'll write it down here, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the fraction's reciprocal. So 1 over 1 half is equal to 1 times 2 over 1, which of course is equal to 2. So I'll go ahead and erase that now. So f of 1 half is equal to 2. So let's plot that. x equals 1 half, y equals 2, that's right about there. Again, if we had input negative 1 half, we would get an output of negative 2. So we'll plot that point as well. Negative 1 half, negative 2, gonna be right about there. And we'll do one more. Let's evaluate the reciprocal function at 1 third. That's going to be 1 over 1 third, which of course is equal to 3. So we've got an x-coordinate of 1 third, 
that's right about there, and a y-coordinate of 3, so that's right about there. And of course, we can also plot the point negative 1 3rd, negative 3, which is right about there. Now we can start to see the shape of this graph coming to life. We see that as the absolute value of x gets smaller, as it gets closer and closer to zero from the positive or negative direction, the y values are getting greater and greater. When x is positive and getting smaller, the y values are approaching positive infinity. When x is negative and getting smaller, the y values are approaching negative infinity. So there is a rough sketch of the graph of the reciprocal function. This is a graph of what's called a hyperbola. If you know what odd and even functions are, you might notice that this reciprocal function is odd. It has rotational symmetry about the origin. So if we rotated it 180 degrees about the origin, it would look like we hadn't rotated it at all. So that's another neat thing about the reciprocal function. You might also notice that it appears to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, and it appears to have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So first, why do we have this vertical asymptote at x equals zero? Well, of course, that's because we cannot actually input x equals zero into the reciprocal function. x equals zero is not in the domain. And again, that's because we can't divide by zero. The function is undefined at x equals zero. x can get super, super close to zero. It just can't ever be equal to zero. And then why do we have this horizontal asymptote at y equals zero? That's because there's no number we can input in the reciprocal function in order to get an output of zero. There's no number you can divide one by in order to get zero. As we divide by bigger and bigger numbers, y will get really close to zero, as we can see here, but it's never going to quite equal zero. So that is why it has these asymptotes. Again, it has the vertical asymptote at x equals zero because zero is the only real number not in the domain of the function. Of course, x can get very, very close to zero, and as it does that, the y values tend towards positive or negative infinity, depending on whether the x values are positive or negative. And we have the horizontal asymptote at y equals zero because there is no number you can divide one by in order to get zero. We can divide by a really, really large positive value of x or a really, really large negative value of x, and that will get us a y value close to zero, but it will never come quite equal to zero. So that is just a little bit about the reciprocal function, how to graph it, what it looks like, and some of its properties. An interesting question you might be wondering is what happens if we make some slight alterations to the reciprocal function. For example, instead of just 1 over x, what if we had 1 over x minus some constant k? Or what if instead of having 1 in the numerator, we have a constant a? Or maybe we add a constant of h to the whole fraction. How would these transform the function? Those are great questions, and we'll go over them in detail in another lesson. But I certainly encourage you to play around with some functions like this on your own, and see what happens. Anyways, that is all I've got for you today, my friends, so I hope this video helped you understand what the reciprocal function is, as well as some of its properties. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Welcome, my child, may you leap with joy and ward off the evil that they employ. May your heart's desire always.